Okay. Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming out. My name is Gary Alexander. Tonight we're going to talk about project management and what's in it for me. But before we begin, I'd like to tell you a little bit about myself. I'm a project manager currently. I have over 12 years of experience in project management. I've worked for the semiconductor industry where as a project manager with the Japanese robotics firm where we went into most of the major semiconductor plants throughout the U.S. and we would go in and automate those plants with robots. I was also a project manager with a company called The Great Indoors. Uh, as a project manager for them, my job was when the customer would come into the store and work with the designer to design what they wanted to do, remodel their house, I would go out with the designer and look at the design, review it that they've drawn, and help them understand if it would fit or not. For example, they say, we want to put a double oven over here. My thing would be, okay, well, you're going to need a different plug. Need to, you know, add more plugs to the to the circuit or whatever to to, to work that. So, I'm going to try to pull on all that experience today and just go over some things about project management because just see how where you are with project management, see how you feel about it. So to start with, what is project management? Does anyone know what project management is? Pulling people and resources together to get the job done. Good point. Anybody else? Managing a project, like keeping people in line, and you know, y'all all have the same goal, and making sure people follow it. Okay, that's good. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. 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 And, uh, finding, uh, finding, uh, maybe uh, strengths and weaknesses in each of the the cogs, if you will, mm -hmm. and plugging them into the appropriate spots for the work effectively together. Right. Right. Very good. Very good. So, with that being said. One other question before we start. Have you all actually seen, do you know what a project is? You talk about project management, what it is. Have you, do you know what a project is? I think so. Okay. <laughs> right. So, so, you know, for example, my role of project is from the, from the, uh, the conception of the idea and the process of actually how does that come to be okay. and the actual fulfillment of that project on the back end. Absolutely. Absolutely. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. And we'll touch the more on that as we get into this presentation. So our agenda today, we're going to talk about what, are, what project management is, go over some of the definition and characteristics of projects, uh, and we'll talk about uses for project management. Who and where you see it used. So you answer those questions. So project management is the process of putting everything together, all those activities to produce a deliverable. Okay? So can you think of anything that might be a project that we have to have project management for? And so I asked that question earlier and I was trying to get you guys thinking. And so let me throw this out there. Holiday season, Christmas, Thanksgiving, those are major project management days. Seasons, right? Someone's in the kitchen, you got people coming over, you got relatives, you got to make room for everybody, you got to make, Aunt, Aunt Maggie doesn't like onions in her food, you got to do all this other stuff you got to do. And mom's in the kitchen managing the whole project, and then the kids got to be fed. So it's major, major project management. And a project, it's a temporary endeavor to produce a service or a result. And the big thing about a project is that they are, it's a defined period of time, it's the beginning and the end, and it's usually something that's never been done before. Now, I say that, and we just talked about the Christmas or Thanksgiving meal, right? Or a wedding could be a pro project, and it's project management, major, major time there, okay? We talked about the Thanksgiving and Christmas dinners, and, and I say that they've never been done before. Each time you do it is different. You don't do the same thing each time. So yes, you're doing another, you got the family coming over again, you know. However, maybe grandpa is upset this season and he doesn't want something, you know, whatever. So you gotta change things around, you gotta be fluid. And that's really the crust of the discipline of the project manager. You've always gotta be fluid because you never know what's gonna happen. You plan for the worst and hope for the best, but you never know what's going to happen, so you have to be fluid. Specific time, cost, and performance requirements. 
Those are all characteristics of a project. Now, uses for project management. Project management, for me, is mostly in industry. I currently am a project manager with the FAA, where I manage several projects, multi-million dollar projects throughout the U.S., throughout the central U.S. Probably most of the states in the central U.S. I have something going on. I do, for the air traffic control towers, I do work in those buildings. I do work, and I say I do work, basically I manage the projects, right? So other people are actually doing the real work. You won't tell them. Right. But really, uh, throughout the central U.S., I have projects going on, and it can be multi-billion dollar projects, or it can be something as simple as a dinner. But it's still a project, because it has a definite deliverable. It has activities that come together to produce that one thing. And that's what we're talking about here. So in summary, we talk about what project management is, we went over the characteristics, definitions, and we talked about who uses project management and where. So I have a couple of handouts that I want to give to you all just to kind of go over some of the main points that we talked about here. And then I have a few questions for you all. So other than the dinner, the Thanksgiving dinner, who can give me another example of a project that needs managing? Well, I used to work at Siemens, and they were, were involved in the DFW airport baggage handling systems. Okay. So that was a major project. Yes, absolutely. All the baggage handling at the DFW airport mm -hmm. was done by Siemens. Right. So what do you think were some of the things or some of the activities that made up that project? Well, the wiring, okay. the concrete, mm -hmm. the uh, conveyor systems. Right. The uh, automation, right? A lot of things. Absolutely, absolutely. Anyone else? Ideas? My example would be it's uh, like a marketing concept or a rollout. Okay. For example, so um, I've, I've got a, a client that comes to me and says, "Hey, look, I've got I want to broadcast out this to my hundred locations. Mm -hmm. We've got a concept. Right. We just had, don't have a clue on how to make that happen. And right. Not only how to make it happen." how they're going to pay for it, how it invoices, and all that kind of stuff. Right. 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 Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's really the way we do our, our project management. So first of all, say for example, DFW, Fort Worth at DFW Airport. They decide they want to do something there. They say, well, we want to put in a new runway. Okay? We don't know how much it's going to cost, but we know we want it. And we want it yesterday. So what we have to do is they will contact us and say, okay, we want this new runway. We don't know how much it's going to cost, but can you guys come out and tell us what it's going to cost and how high it has to be, what's the width of it, what's the length and all that. Well, we have to come out and determine, well, what do you plan on landing there? Do you plan on landing small jets, big jets, you know, jumbo jets, what? Because that makes a difference in how, how much, much runway. Weight. How much mean, weight. How much weight also as for the stickness of the runway. But the distance also may, it makes a difference in yes. what kind of jets you're going to land and take off because they need more space. Because a big jet takes a long time to take off. Exactly, exactly. So those are the kind of things. So we send our engineering group out there. They do all the measurements. They come back. They get back to me and they say, okay, Gary, this is how much it's going to cost to do what they want to do. And then this is the schedule that we will go by to get it done at X, Y, Z. So then, as a project manager, my job would then be able would be to bring all the stakeholders together. The management team with, with the airport, the city, any kind of federal people that I would have to bring all those people together and say, look, this is what you asked for, this is our proposition, this is what can happen. Then they would say, well, no, yes, no, we don't like that, we have to go back to the drawing board. And project management, as you kind of alluded to earlier, and, and you talked about, is really about setting expectations and really getting people to understand feelings with each other. How do I feel about that? Because really at the end, whether a project was good or finished on time, if you go back to the customer and say, hey, how did you feel about that project? The customer might say, it was crap. 
I didn't really like it. Yeah, we finished it, but it was tough. And why? Because of the relationship that the project manager developed with that manager. He may not have liked it, but he was glad to get the project done, but he probably won't come back to you for another project. They'll try to do it themselves and may end up doing something wrong. So, uh, any other questions for me? I have one. Okay. Um, what, how would you describe a failed project? Like, would you describe it as something that isn't on time, or have there been instances where you had a project that didn't, you couldn't see it all the way through, something happened, or how good. do you deal with that? Okay, good question. How do you describe a failed project? So there are numerous reasons for a failed project, okay? For example, you could have a failed project because I have one now that one of the contractors that we had that was actually going to do the work, we called them the implementer that was going to do the work, they went bankrupt, went out of business. Uh-oh. So the project is already ready to go. Everybody's there, shovel in hand, and uh-oh, no more money. We're out of business. So now what do you have to do? It's a failed project, but it's failed for a different reason. Now, there's also a reason that if the contractor is out there and he's not doing well or he's not getting you the information you need, you can cancel the contract, fail project again, but because of the contractor. Mm -hmm. you know. So also project can fail because it doesn't come in on time or it doesn't come in under budget, within budget, scope creep, and what I mean by that, let me explain that. Scope creep is when you start a project, you have a scope, and meaning that what you're the plan for the project, what your plan is, what are you going to do? How much work you have to do? How much you can work you're going to have to do? For example, if this room was my project, I have to say, okay, well, I'm going to have brick walls, I'm going to have a carpet on the floor, I'm going to have this table, it's going to be this long, I'm going to have a fan there, I'm going to have pictures on the wall, whatever. Now, in the process of going through and, and developing this project and starting and getting working on it, if something happens, so let's say, this brick, the particular brick that I wanted isn't available anymore. My scope already had this particular brick set for the project. So now we have to have a scope change because now this brick isn't available, I have to get another type of brick. That type of brick may be more expensive. My budget has to change for that particular project. Sometimes they, it uh, happens because the client once more yes. than they originally contracted. Yes, yes, they, they often do that, they yeah. often do that. And that's where the project, do that a lot. that's where the project manager has to go in and actually meet with the client and say, okay, we talked about this, we agreed on this, now you're asking for that. Okay, if we understand, yes, we can provide that, yes. but if we were gonna complete this by December, and you're asking for this, we won't be able to, to, to complete this until right. July. You have to get to Are, are you agree. okay with that? Yeah. And they never well, say no. Exactly. Say, yes, we can do that. But this is what it's going to cost in time and money. There's always a consequence. Yes. There's always a consequence for everything that you do. If you don't have do stuff on time, there's a consequence. If you add stuff, there's a consequence. And sometimes it's uh, uh, because of regulatory requirements. Sure, especially with us. Yes, yeah, especially with us. So with ba like going off of that, whenever you meet with the client, mm -hmm. do you have like a contract agreement that they sign and you sign, or is it more verbal so you can be more lenient with it? No, it's, it's all, it's for, so it's let me back up. Normally, normally outside of the government, because I work for the government, Okay. outside of the government in the other world, Everything is written. Right. So, like, if you come to me and you want to con do a contract with me, in fact, I used to have a remodeling construction company myself. I ran it. And if a customer came to me and wanted me to do something with their house or their commercial building, it was all in writing. So there was no surprises, no changes. Right. So here, on the other side, we're all in the family. We're all together. So I, I know this is what you agreed to. And yes, you want the latest and greatest of this thing. And I said, I can do that for you, but it's going to take longer. Now, if you get down to the wire and you say, well, you know, that's really taking too long. I, I, you know, why don't we stop it now? You can't stop it now. We're already out of the gate. The horses are running, you know. Everybody, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. you got to fly people in. 
you got to bring in companies, and God forbid you have to bring in a crane, because as soon as the crane starts rolling, the clock starts ticking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, so there's a lot of things that go into project management that once it gets up and going, it's a beast. And you have to feed that beast every day, all day. Talk to the people, massage feelings. You know. Take the hit. Project managers take the hit. It's part of the job. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Thanks a lot for your time. Thank you.